First of all, there's some principles I want you to write down first. The first one is that there's nothing on earth as powerful as the human will. Nothing more powerful than that. Matter of fact, the human will is so powerful that God himself does not control it. I want you to remember that. There's one thing that God does not control on earth and it's the human will. Why? Because the very nature of will implies self-control. God gave you the power of will. Number two, the will controls the destiny of man. Your will is the agency of God's kingdom administration. When God establishes kingdom on earth, he wanted it to be administrated through your will. The problem is your will is yours. The most dangerous gift God ever gave man was a will. And the most precious gift God ever gave man was a will. It's dangerous and it's precious. It's precious because God gave you the same power that he possesses, the power of a will. But it's dangerous because you also have the ability to choose against God. And that's how dangerous a will is. God intended to use the will of man to fulfill his will on earth. So God wanted you to use your will for his will. The only problem is a will gives you the power to choose even against the will of the one who gave you the will. I want you to follow this thinking now. Number three, the seat of the will is the conscious and the subconscious mind. That's where the will lives. It lives in the heart. Your heart is your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind is the seat of control for your life. Then you got two minds, in case you don't know. You got a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Sub means below. So you got a mind that is always conscious, but then you got a mind beneath that that is not always conscious but it's deeper and more important than your conscious mind and your conscious mind feeds your subconscious mind information and the more your conscious mind hears something it feeds it to the subconscious mind that is why repetition is dangerous repetition constantly goes to your conscious mind but the more your conscious mind hears something it begins to deposit it or can I use the technical term it downloads it to your subconscious mind now you are safe as long as something is in your conscious mind you're still safe because you can forget what's in your conscious mind but the key is to get it to your subconscious mind once it gets there then you are in trouble why because the mind is the center of thought and it holds the key to life now when I use the word mind another statement to write down as a man think it, so is he. We all know that. But please quote it properly. As a man think it where? In his heart. There are two thinkings. There's a think and there's a heart think. Now the word heart here is a Hebrew word referring to the subconscious mind. That's the one below. Solomon says, you are whatever is in your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is your heart. Your subconscious mind is your heart. Your subconscious mind is your heart. Whoever controls your heart controls your life. Whoever can get enough information into your subconscious mind will control you. Because as a man think it in his heart, that's the man. So if you want to control the man, all you've got to do is control his heart. And how do you control his heart? First you work on the conscious mind first and you keep repeating, repeating, repeating and repeating until the conscious mind deposits it in the heart. And now you're in trouble. That is why some of you are having problems with battles of things you're trying to change and you can't change them. Old habits that you were keeping for the last 20 years and now you want to change and it's tough to change. Young people, that is why God tells you to stay away from evil things. If you keep watching pornography, you keep reading dirty books, you keep listening to, to bad stories or, or dirty jokes, and if you keep listening, now the first time you see it, it doesn't bother you. But if you keep seeing it, it becomes downloaded. 
Now, once something is downloaded on your hard drive, what happens? Even when you are not conscious of it, it is still running. And all you got to do is press the right button and you see all the pictures in color. That's why the Bible says, take heed what you hear. Why? If you don't control what comes into your conscious mind, it will soon become a part of your subconscious mind and it's in your heart. And the Bible says, out of the heart, what? The mouth really speaks. It's out of the heart comes what? The issues of life. And Jesus said, from whence comes murders and lust and adultery? He said, they are coming from the heart. Everybody say the mind. Write this down, please. The mind is defined as the heart. It determines the future and destiny of a man. I guess what I'm saying today is you are a sum total of the choices you make every day and whatever you decide to hear and see and listen to constantly will become your future. You become what you're continually hearing. You become what you're continually seeing. That's as simple as life is. Some of you are still plagued with habits that you've been trying to break. And I know I've been dealing with people in counseling. And they say, I've been born again for 20 years and I'm still struggling. And the answer is, you've downloaded some stuff that is still there. Now, how do you clean a hard drive? That's the issue, you computer buffs. How do you clean a hard drive of stuff that's been downloaded? Well, that's a tough thing to do. Sometimes you got to buy a whole new computer because you can't get it off. Hey, boys, they're born all over again. Or what you got to do is you've got to buy another program that literally cleans it out. That's what the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is God's software. Glory, hallelujah. And the material is the word of God. And the software takes the material and you're supposed to constantly keep hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God until it drowns out what was there for 20 years. That's the only way to do it. Now, it's really a battle for the soul. Let's talk about the soul, the mind. Write this down quickly. The mind is the center of the soul. What is the soul? The soul is an integration of three parts. Please write this down. The soul is the integration of the mind, the will, and the emotions. In other words, those three things make up your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. What is your soul? Your mind, your will. Come on, everybody say, what is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. All of them make up your soul. So your feelings are in your soul. Your decision-making power is in your soul. And your mind, your thinking bank is in your soul. That makes your soul the most important part of your life. Let me explain why. The battle in life is for the soul of man. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. Now, why did Jesus say that? You see, winning a body is no problem. Even winning a spirit is easy. You get born again in seconds. But winning your soul is a tough job. My job as a teacher and a communicator is to work on your soul. I am after your soul. I want to win your soul. I've already won your body because you're here. And I've already won your spirit because you want to find God. But winning your soul is a tougher job. Because winning your soul takes a longer time than winning your body and your spirit. You are born again in a second, but trying to get you converted is a tough job. So the battle is for what? Your soul. The soul of the people, the soul of the nation, the soul of your children, the soul of your spouse, the soul of your entire job. Your soul is in trouble. The attack is against your soul. I want you to get this message. Write this down. The soul is the first component of media created by God. Why is the soul the first component of media? And this is new stuff for you, so you got to think about this. The soul is a media because the soul is the mediator between the spirit and the body. The soul is the most dangerous part of your life. Matter of fact, your spirit is not your problem. Because you are a spirit. 
but your soul is your problem because your soul is the one that dictates what your spirit receives don't miss this I know the devil is in the Bahamas today because if I was him I'd come to this meeting myself and sit up front right here you sit right there listen to me teach because the devil knows that I got the key to his battle the devil ain't after your body your body's just a bunch of dirt a lump of dirt he ain't after your spirit because your spirit's already filled with someone but there's a, a, a key component that he can still manipulate what is your soul your mind your will and your emotion and the soul is the medium between the spirit and the body now write this down the soul receives from the senses and deposits in the spirit very important what does the soul do it receives from the senses in other words hearing tasting seeing touching and feeling all come to the senses but they all go to the soul they go to your mind your will and your emotions so whatever you see touch taste feel or hear goes to your soul now if your soul takes it and deposits it into you which is your spirit then you got to make sure regulate what the soul is picking up from the senses that's why Jesus said take heed what you hear take heed means be selective regulate your hearing uh, choose what you want to listen to why he said because it will it will leaven the whole lump my god it'll mess up your whole life your soul receives from the senses and deposits in your spirit but here's the other side it's a little bit difficult now sometimes the, the spirit body don't want to do what the spirit the soul wants to the it body. to do so the soul is in a battle Is what you call a mental battle a battle of the soul so your spirit says the information that I got from the body is unrighteous and the soul says but that's all the body gave me the soul cannot give the body or the spirit rather what the body didn't receive faith comes by what hearing and you hear it through what the body so the body hears something the soul takes it believes it and gives it to the spirit now the spirit receives and conceives it if your spirit has the spirit of God in it there's another spirit that's missing there it's on the inside of the spirit that spirit disagrees with what the spirit just received and the spirit of God says now that is not righteous information so the spirit of the man tells the soul of the man that is not righteous tell the body that is not righteous tell the body to change source of information body says no I like how it feels so come on feel it and so the soul feel it from the body and the soul says, it does feel okay and the spirit says but it ain't right so the spirit says soul tell the body stop it body said feels sensually good don't you like it soul and soul said mm hmm I know it's wrong but it feels emotionally good and so the spirit loses and now the spirit is downloading junk that's starving it to death You know who's the most important part of that whole trinity? It's that soul fella. That soul. Because that soul could decide to reject or accept. It's the power of the soul. So the soul takes from the body, gives to the spirit, but the spirit also takes from the spirit and gives to the soul for the body. So the body can only do what the soul makes it do and the soul can only do what it accepts from the spirit. That's why the Bible says do not walk in the flesh but walk in what? The spirit and you not fulfill the lust of the flesh.
Thank you very much, oh man. All of that is man. Thank you very much. By the way, you know, there's a female in the middle there. She got the feeling part. Praise God. Write this down. The soul feeds the spirit and receives from the spirit. This is a mystery. The soul feeds the spirit, but it also feeds the body through the spirit. Through the soul, rather. And it's very important that, that you be careful what you listen and hear and see and allow to come into your taste buds That's what drugs are about. Drugs are about tasting and feeling and, and sensing something that your soul begins to emotionally enjoy and the spirit rejects. But if you do it enough times, it's downloaded and now when you want to quit doing drugs, your problem is it's stuck in your hard drive. So you get saved and saved and saved, but you never get your hard drive clean. The only way to be completely free from any kind of habit is to have a replacement of habits. You got to download new information. Write this down, please. What's the purpose of God in all of this? Number one, man is a spirit. He lives in a body. He possesses a soul. That's what man is. Man is a spirit. He lives in a body. He possesses a soul. Say it with me. Man lives in... Man is a spirit, he lives in a body, but he possesses a soul. That's the unity, triunity of man. Whoever controls the soul rules the man. That's it, that's the point. The original purpose of God, therefore, was to rule the seen world from the unseen world through the unseen man living in the seen body on the scene. Get it? In other words, God wanted to control the world through you, but he wanted to do it from the unseen world. And he wanted to do it through your unseen spirit living in your seen physical body and he wanted to do that on the seen earth so that his will which is invisible could be seen visibly through your actions and through your execution so God wanted to rule the world through you without coming to the world by, your, by and through your spirit the soul is God's media for kingdom rulership it's very important to understand this God wants to rule the world through your soul that's why the Bible says <laughs> I wish above all things that you prosper notice the focus even as your soul prospers God places the number one prosperity focus on your soul if you're not prospering in your soul God says you are poor in every other area so if you're not getting the right information you are actually destroying your life very important Write this down, please. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of the, of the soul, the kingdom of the heart. If the kingdom doesn't get in your soul, the kingdom can't get to the earth. If the kingdom of God cannot get in your soul, it cannot get to the earth. If it cannot get into your heart, the earth will never see the rulership of God. Rulership begins in the heart. That's where it is. And until it gets there, there will be no kingdom manifestation on the earth. The first word of Jesus in his public ministry. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 it says and Jesus began to preach repent the word repent means what to change your mind where's your mind in your soul his first attention was given to the soul if I can get your soul changed he says then the kingdom can come from heaven on earth now there's a point I want you to write down here very important point and that is the kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of the of the soul also God is battling for your soul so is Satan that's my point for the whole day Satan and God really are not after your body even though that's important for the earth they're really after your soul God is and Satan is because whoever controls your soul controls you I think we become so spooky we forgot where the battle is we become so spiritually spooky that we have actually invented demons that don't exist and we're fighting things that aren't there and the real battle we're missing uh, 
Oh, I was studying the life of Jesus last night, just going through some of the thoughts that he expressed. And it's incredible. I wish I could just teach this for another two hours, but you couldn't take it. But Jesus is mine. He was always going after the mind. Always. He said, if you hear my teaching, listen to my teaching. If you follow my word, listen to my word. He said, my words are spirit and they give you life. He's trying to get it through your soul. If I can get your mind changed, he says, you'll be sanctified. It's a battle for the mind. So we got two kingdoms and both are after your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions. What is your soul? Your mind, your will. That is why most of you are losing your battles. Think about it. Let's deal with one of them just for a second. Emotions. What do you think is making you keep going back to that situation that you know is wrong? It's your emotions. Satan got you, man. One phone call and your knees get weak. Emotions. You're going back to that ungodly relationship. The battle is over the minute you feel your knees getting weak. And you start leaving the house. And you drive in there and know the Holy Ghost screaming at you saying, Stop! Turn around! Don't go back there! He don't love you! She don't love you! Stop it! They're going to break up your marriage! Stop! Stop! And you still drive in. It's a battle. And the battle doesn't stop because you're preaching dongs. You got to grab your body. Come on, somebody. He said, I got to beat my body under. Your body got to come here, body. You going back to prayer meeting or back home to eat. It's your emotions. Write this down, please. Let's talk about what, what is the media. Now, we say the soul is God's media. Let's talk about media. The word media. Uh, the word media is from the word medium. Write this down, please. It's very important for every young person and old person to read. Very important to remember this tape. Get this CD, please. I beg you. What I'm teaching today is the key to 2005, 6, 7, 8, 10, 20. Because there is an attack on your soul like you never believe. You got 125 channels in your house with a remote control. And every button is after your soul. So you better understand what they're doing. Every radio station station and every number on the station is after your soul. This ain't entertainment. This is containment. They want to contain you. They want to control you. And that's what it's all about. It's about the media. And the word media is from the word medium. It means to stand between. In other words, the media is the thing between the source and the object. We showed you an example just now. We saw the spirit of man and the body of man. Well, the media is the one in the middle. That's the one that decides which receives what. That's what medium is. The word media means to mediate. Jesus Christ is called the mediator between God and man. Can I hear amen to that? Oh, I want to stop there for a couple of days and just preach. The Bible says there's only one medium between God and man. Only one. And who is that? The man Christ Jesus. That means if you get information from anybody else, Lord have mercy, to save your soul, you ain't got the right message. Hello? Christ is not one of the prophets between God and man. It says there's only one mediator. I respect Buddha. I appreciate Muhammad. I thank God for Haile Selassie. I thank God for Baha'i Lu La La La. All these guys are great. But the Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man. And it's the man Christ Jesus. That means anybody else will give you distorted communication. Oh, I want to show you something. You're going to believe this. Write this down, please. Media means to interpret. When I travel to foreign countries and I speak to thousands of people in these big meetings, I speak English, they speak Portuguese. I speak English, they speak Russian. I speak English, they speak French. I speak English, they speak Spanish. And I'm standing there and they put between me and the people this guy. Now, I got to hope that this guy... Come on. 
is telling them what I say. Not only that, I got to hope he understand in himself what I'm saying. Boy, interpret, that's what media is. That means the chances of you getting the wrong message is so high when the mediator is in question.